Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Nanoscopy Meets Lifetime, Introducing the New Stellaris 8 Tau Stead. I'm Alexis Kraus of Labert, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is brought to you by Labert and sponsored by Leica Microsystems. For more information about our sponsor, please visit their website at leicamicrosystems.com. So let's get started. I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click on the Send button. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the Support tab found at the top right of the presentation window, or report your pro problem by clicking on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. I would like to welcome back, I would like to welcome our presenter, Dr. Julia Roberti, Product Manager at Advanced Confocal Imaging. For a complete biography on our presenter, please visit the biography tab at the top of your screen. Dr. Roberti, you may now begin your presentation. Welcome. Thank you, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, my name is Julia Roberti. I'm Product Manager for Advanced Confocal Imaging, and I'm absolutely thrilled to share with you today an overview of our latest innovations in super resolution and nanoscopy with the Stellaris STET and Stellaris 8 STET uh, microscopes. And let me start very quickly with this question, why STET super resolution? Why do we choose this technology and integrate it in our new uh, Stellaris confocal platform? And uh, I found this uh, very nice quote by a member of the Nobel Committee on the occasion of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry 2014. Uh, and uh, when we want to do STET, we want to uh, get quantitative descriptions at the nanoscale of the dynamics of complex molecular biology uh, processes that define the phenotypes of all life forms. And this means that we can go way below the diffraction limit with molecular specificity to study structure and dynamic interactions, and we can reach this level of detail that is not um, achievable with um, conventional far field fluorescent microscopy. And not only that, we can access information on these structures within the context of cells, tissue, and uh, organisms. And with this motivation in mind, now I want to go further and show you how we have uh, reimagined super resolution with our two microscopes, the Stellaris STET and the Stellaris 8 STET. And how did we do this? Well, uh, we took advantage of the strengths of our new confocal platform that we developed to have uh, the power to see more, to gather more signal and get, uh, get the best and optimal images from every specimen, having access to the lifetime-based information with every confocal experiment, and having the means to do more with tools that integrate uh, very powerfully and nicely all these aspects. And uh, for STED, this means that uh, we can understand uh, molecular relationships and mechanisms within the cellular context following multiple events at a time. We can obtain outstanding super resolution and image quality combined with sample protection thanks to a new way of doing STET. And we can get access to STET with an easy setup of experiments in a few clicks for first time users and with full control for expert microscopists. And I want to share with you now an example, very nice, of uh, in which we characterize a transcriptional regulation uh, with single molecule fish. So this is a three-color tausted image of Drosophila embryo whole mount where the probes are not amplified. And we can see very nicely that with confocal, we can get an excellent image of the entire embryo. And then we can choose a region of interest and we can study it. And we can go nicely from the confocal information to tausted in three colors and access the information on the three genes targeted in this case with molecular specificity and at nanoscopy uh, resolution. And as I mentioned, one of the ingredients to achieve this, as, um, as I said, is the ability to see more. And for STET, 
This means that we can extend the number of simultaneous events to study. Thanks to the flexible use and combination of uh, state suitable floor force, we can find the best imaging conditions for the sample thanks to the flexibility of three state laser lines, and we can obtain excellent image um, quality thanks to the new power HiD family of highly sensitive photon counting capable detectors. So uh, with Stellaris and instead on Stellaris, we achieve this by the combination of the power HiD detectors, the new white laser, the newly optimized uh, beam path for uh, optimized transmission, and as I mentioned, up to three stat lines. And here we have uh, another example on multicolor stat imaging in which we can uh, go very nicely from confocal to nanoscopy resolution in this case, by targeting uh, nuclear pores, uh, mitochondria, and actin. So in uh, STET for Stellaris, we have as a first new thing I want to share with you, uh, the new Power HiD detector family. I will not go into detail because of uh, time, but for sure we can discuss that later. And I would also point you to our uh, newly uh, published application note in Nature Methods that describes and where you can find details, uh, more details about this uh, new family of detectors. And for STET, this means that we have up to five STET capable fast and sensitive photon counting detectors and we combine these detectors with a new thing uh, in provided by Stellaris which is the next gen generation white light lasers and here uh, if you're familiar with the white light laser and uh, AOBS technology uh, you know that with a single laser we can do the work of many and we can combine up to eight single excitation lines simultaneously and we will have for STED available uh, two, uh, the two types of uh, white light laser that we offer with different excitation range possibilities from 485 to 685 and from 440 to 790. And with this, we get complete spectral freedom with excitation optimally matched to the fluorophore. And so we have uh, everything covered from the white light laser, AOBS, beam path size, uh, side with the power HiD detectors, and we complement and we round that up with uh, the three step lines available to cover the entire spectrum uh, so that we can optimize for best performance of suitable floor force. We can do 3D STET, and for this, we can select the dimension we need with uh, our proven technology, which is robust and easy to use. And it allows us to allocate the light uh, to two STET uh, pathways to get the best lateral resolution or the best, best axial resolution or tune between, uh, between them and optimize for the smallest focal volume. And when we talk about uh, 3D STET, of course, we need to consider and take care of the inhomogeneities, for example, the cover glass thickness, temperature changes, refractive index uh, mix mismatch that becomes significant when we go deep. And for this, we have the state wide class of object, uh, objective lenses with best in class optics for state imaging. So we can have the best starting point and we can adaptively uh, correct at the sample level where these sources of aberrations occur. And we have three state specialized lenses for daily for deep and for live cell nanoscopy. So now I want to move on to the next very exciting aspect, which goes into the direction of what lifetime-based information brings into the STET world. And with this, we will be able to perform uh, STET imaging at cutting edge resolution with excellent quality and dramatically light dose and dramatically lower light dose. Uh, we will be able to perform extended state imaging experiments at gentle conditions, and that means more frames for dynamic life cell experiments or volumetric imaging. And we will have access to state imaging with the best state fluorophores, especially the far red range that overlap spectrally thanks to lifetime based species separation. And this is uh, thanks to a new way of doing STET with the technology that we developed and it's called uh, TAU-STET and with lifetime-based uh, species separation. 
So I have here an example that illustrates exactly what is the strength of Tausted. I have here nuclear pores that I, we have stained uh, at the basket, so then you see uh, tiny dots where the pores are, and we image them in confocal and also instead with very, very low light dose, extremely low, so with 2% uh, of our 660 uh, stead line. And if you compare the confocal with the conventional stead, we don't see much of a difference or benefit. But having access to Tausted, we can see now that protecting the sample, because we are talking about a really uh, low stead light, we can achieve outstanding stead quality and resolution. So now I want to uh, explain to you a bit more in detail how it works. And for that, uh, I want to start with lifetime. So fluorescence lifetime makes its appearance. And uh, if we think how the uh, fluorescence emission process uh, occurs, we have molecules in a ground state and they are excited. And they come back from the excited state back to the uh, ground state by different processes. And when this process is the emission of photons, then we are talking about fluorescence. And we will be able to count the number of, uh, number of photons, and that corresponds to the intensity of fluorescence that we measure. But also, there's a very important um, parameter, there's a very important aspect, which is the time that it takes for the molecules to come back from the excited state to the ground state. And this average time is exactly the fluorescence lifetime. We can measure it in our system because we have white light laser will pulse uh, excitation, and we have photon counting detection. Detectors. So basically what we will do is we will measure the time that it takes for the photons to be detected. And with this, this information, we can estimate and we can calculate the, um, the lifetime, the fluorescence lifetime. And that means that in an experiment in which we have uh, flame capability, so we have access to fluorescence lifetime imaging microscopy, we will get not only the intensity information, but we will also get the flame information. And we will get this extra layer that will allow us to get more from the stead uh, side. And this uh, technology, Flame, it's very powerful because the fluorescence lifetime depends on the microenvironment. And on the one hand, it opens the door for molecular interaction doing a flame threat, biosensing based on uh, probes that can exhibit changes in lifetime, and also we can do lifetime-based structure or fluorophore or species separation. And FLIM is so powerful because uh, the fluorescence lifetime gives feedback from competing processes. So if we have uh, processes that can bring back the molecules to the ground state other than emission, then the fluorescence lifetime will sense these processes and then it will change. And now nanoscopy comes to play because exactly STET is a competing process. So if we have access to the fluorescence lifetime information, when we have a STET process, when STET is occurring, we will see it in fluorescence lifetime changes. And this is the basis of the technology that allows us to look at STET from a different point of view. So what do we see when we do a traditional STED and what do we see when we do STED combined with lifetime imaging? So in the case of intensity-based STED, we have our excitation and we have the STED donut overlaid and then we will get an intensity-based uh, uh, effective PSF. But there's more information as I mentioned. We have the uh, lifetime information and if we can uh, access to this information, we will be able to map the STED PSF together with not only the intensity, but also this lifetime information. So we generate a tau-coded STED PSF, and we can do that point by point on our um, scanning point in our experiment. And the lifetime information will reveal crucial uh, details for a STED experiment, because we will have not only the excitation and the STED donut information, we will have information on the maximum and minimum energy that the fluorophores are uh, sensing. And using the lifetime information, we will be able to tune the resolution. And also, we will be able to identify photons that are not associated with the state process, but come from uh, uncorrelated um, a signal. And so we will be able to take care of the background and all based on the photophysical information that we get in our experiments. And so we have developed a uh, TAUSTED, 
and to explain you uh, how we have implemented, as I mentioned, we need access to uh, FLIM information, and we will not do it uh, in a fitting way, so we will do it accessing phaser FLIM analysis. I will not uh, explain all in detail uh, how phasers work, but so that you get an idea, this is how uh, FLIM information looks when you uh, analyze and you put it in a phaser uh, in a phaser plot. And this corresponds, this cluster you see here, corresponds to the lifetime information that I get in this case from the NOOP sample in confocal mode. And as I mentioned, uh, STED will compete with the fluorescence lifetime of the normal emission of the fluorophores. So when I activate STED, you will see now here in the in the phaser that the cluster moves and the cluster moves to a different uh, set and a different trajectory of lifetimes because of the stat effect. And we will use this to generate our tau stat image. So we will collect fast the lifetime uh, information at each scanning point of the stat acquisition. And uh, using the, the phaser analysis, we will focus and we will use the state information, the state trajectory, to generate the information that comes from the center of the donut and identify the information that comes from the crest of the donut. And also, we will have information and access to the background information that is located in all this region of the phaser. And we will do a correlation of the each, um, each uh, point with the straight uh, trajectory to decide if the information we are seeing is background or not. And we will obtain the toasted image online and in an automated way. Suppressing so background, increasing the image quality and the resolution at lower uh, light dose. And this is totally integrated and automated in our LASIK software in the image compass user interface and it's accessible one click away. And how do tau state images look like? Well, so if we go back to our NOP sample, uh, we can see the increase in resolution and uh, the signal to noise that we can obtain when we generate the tau state, uh, the tau state image. And we can even push the resolution, for example, using, in this case, um, the Gatapeats um, containing ATO 647N. Uh, and they have a nominal size of 23 nanometer. And when we do a tau stat uh, experiment at 775, uh, with the stat 775, we can get resolution better than uh, 30 nanometer. So we can really push the resolution, but not only that, so we can do it in uh, 2D, in 3D and in multicolor. And to show you an example, uh, this is um, two color uh, 2D stat of glomerular components in mouse kidney that have been stained for synaptopidine and nephrine. And you can see very nicely how we can, we can distinguish this intricate uh, structure that especially in uh, mouse kidney, uncleared, it's very compact and uh, very challenging to extract using super resolution. But with Tausted, we can do it uh, very easily and very nicely. And as I mentioned, it works for multicolor applications in 2D and 3D. Uh, a third aspect and a third uh, key application is the possibility to uh, access to state imaging conditions in, gentle, uh, in a gentle regime and then uh, do uh, life cell experiments in dynamic uh, conditions. So uh, first I want to share with you this very nice example of um, live HeLa cells stained with silicon rhodamine tubulin and we uh, applied a very low uh, light of the STAT775 laser, and as you see, we can get resolution of the microtubules before, below uh, 50 nanometer in gentle conditions. So we can protect our sample and then perform extended uh, time-lapse imaging. And uh, this we can see very nicely here, where we have a tau -STAT experiment with the STAT592 uh, uh, line, and we managed to get over 200 frames at one frame per second at low STAT power. And uh, we can characterize very nicely, in this case, uh, actin filaments that are stained with M neon green. And uh, I want to mention that uh, for Stellaris, we have, uh, as new features, a piezo stage for increased Z stability, and also we have autofocal control for confocal state for workflows for all our three uh, state lines available. So we can open the door for this uh, type of highly dynamic life cell applications. 
And uh, as a last uh, very nice example of what you can do uh, when you have access to lifetime information, and in this case, we are using flame phasers in Stellaris 8 State Falcon. I want to show you what you can do with it. So here we have hex cells that have been stained with uh, bimentin and actin using Alexa 647 and Alto 647N. And as you uh, know, um, they overlap uh, in the far red region of the spectrum. So if we collect uh, with a single detection channel, we will get, if we only use the intensity information in confocal or instead, we will only get both structures mixed and we cannot do much more uh, than, than this. We get the super resolution endoscopy detail, but the structures we cannot distinguish. So I want to show you now how having lifetime-based information allows us to separate these structures and do the species separation. And we do that using uh, flame phasers and um, the phasers are here. So this com corresponds to the confocal that I'm not showing uh, in, in this slide. When we have the STET trajectory with uh, both, um, both, uh, both species contributing, we can select the individual contributions and using the algebra of phasers, the system automatically will generate from one intensity channel, it will generate two uh, channels in which we will have the information of the bimentin and the act acting very nicely separated. So now we can think of expanding the number of species image using lifetime-based information and even combining uh, so this very nice and uh, stable far-red uh, fluorophores for step. So to summarize uh, this uh, Tausted uh, chapter, with Tausted, uh, we can improve image quality and resolution at uh, low light dose. We can perform gentle light cell stead for extended time-lapse imaging. We can identify and eliminate uncorrelated background and investigate protein-protein interaction with multicolor stead based on lifetime separation. So we are opening the door to new insights into structure and function. And uh, very importantly, you get all the raw data so then you can go back to the to the raw data and then you can validate your results uh, before i finish my presentation i want to mention this uh, third uh, aspect so how can we achieve more with stead on stellaris and uh, in the case of stead this means that we can uh, get results that we can trust thanks to the guided acquisition uh, using image compass that is centered on your sample characteristics. So in the same way as you would set up a confocal experiment, drag and, zoom, drag and drop of the fluorophores that you know you have in your sample, we have incorporated the state information. So you drag and drop and you immediately can, uh, with um, one click and start of the experiment, then you can get the appropriate stat line that goes with that fluorophore and uh, conditions that will allow you to get a very good stat image right away, and then you can find you can optimize and find you fine tune uh, further. You can also improve the workflow with the fastest stat acquisition in the market because we have a fast system that, uh, with 1.5 nanoseconds stat time, and we can have uh, that advantageously used for uh, lifestyle imaging. And we can validate the results because we have the availability of STET modality, confocal, we can do super resolution with lightning, and we can also apply thousands tools with Stellaris, and this is fully integrated with STET in our new platform. So um, to finish, I want to show you a brief overview of how our product portfolio looks like. So as I mentioned, we have two systems, the Stellaris STET and the Stellaris 8 STET. The Stellaris TED comes equipped with a white light laser that is uh, offering a range for excitation with lines from 485 to 685, and it has uh, high DS and high DX available. And for Stellaris 8 STED, we have the full power of STED on the Stellaris 8 with the possibilities of different modalities uh, that we can uh, upgrade. And Stellaris 8 STED has available Tau STED when it has a Falcon in available. And uh, as I mentioned, we have up to five power high Ds available. We have improved signal thanks to the new white light laser with uh, the power high Ds and the optimized uh, beam path. We have uh, toasted with all the benefits that we have um, that we have uh, seen. 
We have also thousands tools for STET that allows, for example, ultra flexible digital gating with up to 16 digital gates on the fly. And we have the piezo stage and the autofocus control. And finally, everything is implemented in the image compass user interface. So with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I will very happily uh, take your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rivera, for your informative presentation. So we will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. So, Dr. Roberti, let's get started with our first question. <clears throat> Do you use the split matrix method to separate components using ISAT in your slider, or do you use your own phaser cloud separation or edit method? And if so, what formula, formula do you use? Uh, thank you. This is a very nice question. So, of course, there, there were um, reports already in literature using and exploiting the phaser approach for STET. Uh, and uh, we took that as uh, inspiration for our development and our technology. Uh, but our approach for tau -STET using the lifetime information and the phasers is a proprietary. And uh, so we are not using split. Um, and uh, for those familiar with the, with the split approach, for doing split, you need the confocal information together with the STET information. That is something that we don't need for tau -STET. So we figure out and we do our, um, so our approach with the information that comes from the STED, from the STED experiment uh, alone, and with that is enough. So basically, with all the information that we collect, we can define what is the maximum and minimum energy that our fluorophores, our probes are seeing. And using that information, we use that to do a correlation to assign uh, the different uh, photons coming as coming from background and uncorrelated signal or coming from the set process, and also to construct a set trajectory on the phaser and then produce the, the image that has a tunable resolution. Thank you so much for that answer, Dr. Verdi. So moving on to our next question. How yes. deep into tissue sections can you typically achieve super resolution for example, using vibrate sections of fixed brain tissue? Um, so uh, for doing deep nanoscopy, our approach is using um, adaptive corrections uh, using a motorized uh, collar uh, on our specialized STET objective lenses, the STET white uh, objectives that are corrected, so superbly corrected for uh, spherical aberrations like chromatic aberrations. Uh, and uh, tuning, so it's very important to match the refraction index as uh, much as possible to the immersion medium that in the case of our deep uh, nanoscopy objective lens is a glycerol lens. Uh, and I would say that when the refraction index is uh, very well matched, you can reach uh, depth of, uh, we have done in our experiments uh, on kidney samples, for example, uh, 175 uh, micrometer deep. So uh, it takes um, optimization from the sample point of view, but that is something that um, anyway, when you want to go deep, you need to take care of. Uh, but then using the our um, motorized uh, collar, then that's something that is uh, achievable. Wonderful. We want to thank our audience for all of these great questions coming in. So moving on to our next one. What is the longest time lapse that have been recorded so far and at what sampling interval? Um, so we have uh, examples on live cells. Um, and what uh, I showed here is uh, something, so it's a time lapse of over 200 frames. So we had 230 frames. Uh, we also have uh, imaging on mitochondria live cells over 300 frames. 
So it really depends on what is the process that, uh, yeah, that is uh, um, observed. Uh, and the sampling interval, in principle, the advantage of, uh, of our system is that you can image pretty fast. And as our detectors and our system in, 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 in as a whole has a very short uh, dead time, then we can collect uh, a lot of photons. Uh, and in principle, you can do something like one frame per second. I, if, and of course, you can you can go faster if if you need. So, as a real example, we have uh, examples yes of one frame per second uh, for a 1K 1K um, um, image, and yeah, so we have imaged 300 frames. Uh, that would be our um, in-house best uh, mark. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to remind our audience that any questions that we are unable to answer today and those that come in during the on-demand period will be addressed by Dr. Roberti via the email address that you provided when you registered for this event. So our next question, is there any possibility that we can use this system for FLIMFRET measurement? Um, yes, of course. So our uh, platform comes, so when you have uh, the Estelaris 8 with STED and with Falcon, then you have a fully fledged confocal system that is capable of doing uh, FLIM in uh, our Falcon way, so very fast. So you can do FLIM at uh, confocal speed and uh, you can do FLIM thread uh, experiments. If you're talking about doing FLIM thread and STET, that is of course technically possible. So you have a, a microscope that is capable of doing that. Then uh, I would say from an application point of view, it's something quite complex, uh, but in principle, you have the platform and you have the microscope on which you can uh, design your experiments and, and perform it. Wonderful, thank you. So um, here's another question for us. Regarding the 3D analyzing of STED, I wonder if we have cells, if we were to have cells on a 3D platform, for example, hydrogel, what would be the maximum distance from objective to sample that allows us to do STED? Um, so this again uh, is, um, is a question that uh, yeah, requires to um, match the refraction index of your sample and uh, our objectives. Uh, in principle, the working distance of our two um, stead lenses for deep uh, applications, uh, the glycerol and the water lens, is 300 microns. So uh, then it's a matter of uh, matching the refraction index, so then you can, uh, you can get uh, excellent performance on your measurements. So, um, as I mentioned, we have um, good experiences going over 100 micron. Um, so, yeah, but in this particular case, I, I have not uh, done experiments on um, this kind of uh, gels. So, it's something that would be, um, yeah, so we would need to, to bring a sample to the system and, and, and try. Thank you, Dr. Verdi. So it looks like we have time for a few more questions. So does Tau Stead work with all Stead lines? Yes. So uh, we can apply uh, our Tau Stead approach with the three Stead uh, lines that we offer, uh, the 592, the 660, and the 775. So in principle, you have all the flexibility for working with different fluorophores in the, from the green to the far red region of the spectrum. Thank you. Now, does the lifetime separation of overlapping fluorophores allow one to do multicolor live cell stead faster than spectrally separating fluorophores? So, uh, let me think about that. Um, I would say um, this 
in principle, the, so if you want to do lifetime um, based separation, you will collect. So it depends on how many photons you are collecting. Um, we are pretty fast. On, uh, with our system, so we can do FLIM imaging at confocal speed. Uh, so you could have it, so you could do it as you acquire the images. Um, and yeah, so in principle, I would say that it would be comparable to um, spectral separation approach. So you would not um, have, um, a disadvantage, let's say. So trying to get from a from a flim to uh, as opposed to a spectral um, point of view, as long as you have enough photons. So that is something that is depending on the on the fluorophores. So again, it's a matter of um, of preparing the sample and uh, and experiment with it. So in principle, this so for um, this flim based. Uh, approaches. We are, so it's uh, sample dependent, so you need to, to try and, and see um, how the particular fluorophore combination that you have chosen works. Thank you, Dr. Berti, for that clarification. And so moving on to our next question. So what is the typical resolution achieved in living cells by Tausted? Um, so let's see, um, considering the samples that we have, uh, that we, we have, w with which we have experience on, on Tausted, um, I really like the, the results that we have obtained, um, labeling tubuling, for example, um, with, um, there, tubuling, which is a very nice uh, option for uh, in the, so for tagging uh, live cells uh, with uh, with a probe that is very very small and fluorogenic, and uh, there I we could get 45 nanometer on the microtubules in living cells, which I would say it's an excellent uh, an excellent number for resolution. So again here. Um, it depends. So if you really need to go very, very fast, then you may uh, have to sacrifice a bit of signal. So then the, you would be uh, doing some balancing between resolution and speed. Uh, but in principle, um, you can get excellent uh, results. So it's really, you, you can push the, the resolution also at uh, low light dose. So this is this tubulin is the example that uh, was shown. <clears throat> sorry, was shown on the presentation, and we were working with 10% uh, of the of the STET uh, 775 laser. Wonderful, thank you so much. And it looks like we have time for maybe one more question. So, okay. can I use Tau STED for STED 3D applications? Yes, sure. So the approach that we that we uh, implemented works for 2D and for 3D. So basically, from the uh, lifetime information that we are collecting, we can get uh, benefits in terms in terms of the background removal and on the resolution improvement in uh, in the three dimensions for for that. Thank you again, Dr. Berdi. Do you have any final comments for our audience? Mm, I thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any uh, doubts, any questions, uh, then you can uh, reach me on my uh, email. So you can uh, contact uh, us and uh, I will be happy to discuss uh, your particular uh, application. Wonderful. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their really interesting questions that came in. So questions that we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. We would like to once again thank Dr. Dr. Roberti for her time today and her important research. We would also like to thank Labbert and our sponsor, Leica Microsystems, for underwriting today's educational webcast. 
you can view the webinar on demand. Labrits will alert you via email when it's available for replay. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us, everyone. And until next time, bye-bye, everyone.